guys and welcome back into the Nesson Digital Studio for another episode of Football Now presented by Mimecast. Can't believe it, but the regular season is long gone and the Patriots get ready for their first playoff game of the year when they take on the 12-4 Chargers on Sunday. Yep, there you can see the field being painted and it's almost game time. The Pats are making history, shocker, hosting their ninth consecutive divisional playoff game, the most in NFL history. And with a win, they'll be heading into their eighth consecutive AFC championship. The Chargers, of course, finished 12 and four, a better record than the Patriots, but LA is on the road because they weren't able to win the division. But that has been a problem for the Chargers this year. The Chargers have the best yards per play differential on the road. They are undefeated outside of the city of Los Angeles since their only road loss came at the Rams in LA across town. And they've had some key road wins against some tough teams like the Steelers, Ravens, Chiefs and Seahawks. Reminder, we're on to the one game season and the Patriots, yeah, they know that. You gotta put it all on the line, uh, no, matter, no matter what. No matter what you got, what, whatever you're dealing with, you gotta just put it all on the line. And uh, you know if you lose that game, you're going home. Well, coach, very disciplined. Um, again, outstanding in every area. They make big plays, play good defense. Um, got an explosive group, strong in the kicking game. And it's a challenge on every play. Now let's look at some more key stats. Expect the Chargers to feed their running backs a ton since the Patriots have allowed the third most yards per carry in the league, but the Patriots should counter with their own running backs. The Chargers allowed the most receiving yards to running backs this year, so expect maybe a big game from James White? Yeah, probably. The quarterback matchup should be a classic. It will be Brady versus Rivers on Sunday. And stats make Brady look pretty damn good. He's never lost to the Chargers signal caller, is 2-0 against him in the postseason, 7-0 overall. But despite never beating the GOAT, Rivers has a ton of respect for Brady. I really uh, have not ever had really any, any uh, in linked or at depth conversation with Tom other than, other than the good games afterwards. And they've all been good games from his, his side. But uh, um, no, just a respect, respect from afar. Obviously, what the career he's had and what he's done over over 20 years has been remarkable. So Rivers is trying to make some history by beating Brady for the first time, but there will already be plenty of history in the making on the field at Gillette Stadium on Sunday. This will be the first time ever that a female will be officiating a playoff game in the NFL. Sarah Thomas will be the Downs judge when the Chargers come into town, and it's not this chick's first rodeo. She was the first female full-time official in the NFL. She was also the first woman to officiate a college bowl game. And it's that time of the show when we turn things over to Nesson Patriots beat reporter Doug Kide for his mailbag, where he answers all your questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to this week's mailbag presented by Mimecast. I'm Doug Kide. If you have a question for me, tweet it to me at Doug Kide using the hashtag mailbag and I will try to answer it. First question in these windy, cold conditions comes from Duke of Hampshire at The Big Scoop, who asks, will we see more of James White Sunday? I think you will. I think that James White will get more involved in the Patriots offense now that the postseason has come around. I think the Patriots kind of limited his snaps late in the season compared to early in the season when guys like Rex Burkhead came back, Sonny Michelle came back from injury. I think that we will see a high dose of James White in the postseason because the Patriots don't really have to worry as much about injuries now that they are actually in the big dance in the tournament in the postseason so I think I would expect to see a lot of catches from James White a lot of targets that's pretty much par for the course for the Patriots once they get into the postseason I would probably expect him to even get probably more than half of the Patriots offensive snaps this weekend on Sunday against the Chargers second question here comes from Kyle Bird who asks do you think the Patriots aren't getting any respect this year coming into the playoffs? I don't know if they're getting the same level of respect that they usually do, but it's kind of understandable. The Patriots are 11 and five, Chargers went 12 and four. The Patriots are actually favored in this game. I think it's by about four points at this point. Take out the, the three points that, team, that the Vegas usually gives teams for playing at home. And they're really only about a one point favorite in a neutral game over the Chargers. I think that's probably about right because the Patriots did go 11 and five this season. They aren't as good as usual. I think the fact that they are favored in this game shows that they are still getting a little bit of respect, enough respect, but I wouldn't be surprised 
if a lot of media analysts actually picked the Chargers to win this game. I don't, though. I think the Patriots are going to win it. Last question here comes from MM24500, who asks, does safety Obi Melfonu get activated given the Chargers' height at wide receiver and tight end? The most likely answer to this question is no, just because Obi has not played very often for the Patriots as of late. I think he only lined up in, in one or two games so far this season. But you do bring up a good point that the Chargers receivers and tight ends are all very big. Keenan Allen is six foot two. Mike Williams and Tyrell Williams are both over six foot four. Then you've got Hunter Henry to deal with, Antonio Gates. So having a guy with Obi Melifonwu's height could be valuable in this game. Obi Melifonwu is six foot four. He's got a massive vertical leap. Uh, could participate on special teams a little bit. But the Patriots also are very healthy heading into this matchup. So it's tough for the Patriots to decide on inactives. While I like the idea of activating Obi Melifonwu, I don't think it's going to happen. Thanks so much, Doug. Okay, so now that we've talked about the game, it's rare to see Coach Belichick have any fun during such a pressing time. He's all business all the time. Well, that wasn't really the case when talking with OMF on WEEI. He was asked about Clay Harbor. Yeah, he's not on either roster. He last played in 2016 for the Detroit Lions. He spent the 2016 season with the Patriots, the only time in the last four years New England didn't play in the Super Bowl, but most recently, he was a contestant on The Bachelorette. Wait, is Bill a Bachelor fan? Uh, I did see a couple of minutes of that. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, the, it was on and somebody mentioned it to me and it's like, yeah, there's Clay. All right, well, maybe not, but if he changes his mind, he can come over and watch this season right now at my apartment for Monday viewing. That will do it for this episode of Football Now. Thanks so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. Hopefully we have a Pats win and can talk more next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>